Welcome to the second lab project video discussion supporting an introduction to RS5000 volume 1 can be found in the manual on pages 19 through 22 now that is approximate because as we change things in the manual and update the the table of contents this can change so it's just approximate Navigating RS Logix 5000. This would be the second section in the manual if the sections stay in their current order. I do reserve the right to move the sections around if it makes more sense, especially after I start getting feedback from you all. So, for those of you that have used RS Logix 500, you will find RS Logix 5000 considerably different, even though when you first open the software, software without a project open it does look very similar so right now what you're seeing on the screen you've got the online toolbar there where it says no controller then you've got your uh, instruction uh, list there you've got path and then you've got your main toolbar file edit view search logics logic communications tools window help now that is different than 500 but not a whole lot different and that is a basic windows toolbar so we're doing this in Windows 7 Professional. The appearance is slightly different in XP. Everything in this manual, with just a few exceptions, is Windows 7 Professional. So the look is going to vary between what you see here and what you see on your computer. So to open up this software, you would go to Rockwell Software. You would select that. You would go down to RS Logix 5000 Enterprise Series and select that and you may have to pick an even, even deeper subcategory. Either way, you will finally get to RS Logix 500, 5000, I'm sorry, RS Logix 5000, select it. You'll see a splash screen, and at the bottom of that little splash screen, it's just a little box that says, you know, RS Logix 5000, and then it'll show what versions you have loaded. Now, when mine opens, it shows versions 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, I actually own 21, I just haven't loaded it. So, cruising the main toolbar, file, edit, view, etc. If you select, well, we'll just go through there. We won't follow the book exactly. So, if I select file, uh, I have no project open. Okay, if I have nothing open, I can't close anything, can I? If I have nothing open, I can't save, I can't save as, I can't compact it, I can't generate a report. So all of these drop downs from the main uh, menu bar are context sensitive, meaning whether or not you have a project open. So pretty much all I can do from here in regards to what we're going to do is new. Now I could open a project, go to browse to a folder, find it, or down here is my more most recent. And if you can read down through those, you, you're seeing some of the um, the names of the files that I was creating as I was developing the manual. Okay, so really new is an open is about it. And I don't know what in the world you would print. Yeah, just what I thought. Print's not grayed out, but guess what? <laughs> Everything that you could do is grayed out. Print options. Well, we know if you can't print, you certainly have no print options. Page setup. Uh, we'll leave we'll leave this stuff alone. All grayed out, all grayed out. So I don't know why these aren't grayed out. You know, I guess because there's a subset, this isn't grayed out and these are. Oh well. So next up, edit. Well, there's nothing we can do there because guess what? No project open. There's nothing to edit. View. Uh, really, we can do a little bit to configure our page which we're not going to do. But the main thing is we can select toolbars and the standard toolbar is up here. The online toolbar is right here. That's this box. The path is right here. The language element is right here in documentation languages. I have no idea where that's at. That must be right here. I'm not going to click on it though. So, I guess I'm learning a little something myself. Now, 
if you mess up your toolbar layout, you can always click on Restore Factory Toolbar Layout and get it back the way you had it before you messed it up, and then you can mess it up again. Okay, so we're not going to change anything there. So under View, well, View Toolbars was about it. Search, nothing to search in. No project, what can you search in? Logic, uh, remember, just because they aren't grayed out doesn't mean their choices aren't all grayed out. So there's nothing here you can do. Communications, now here you can do something. You can go to Who Active, which basically opens up an RS Who looking thing. Okay, see, Who Active, that's basically RS Who. We don't want to do anything, so I'm going to close that. I just want to show it to you. Select Recent Path, Go Online. If you say Go Online, you're going to have to have something to go online with. If you say Upload, you're going to have to have something to upload from. So really, there's nothing here but who acted for you. Tools. Um, I don't think we're going to go too much into tools. However, we will select options just for grins. Because <clears throat> uh, there is there is a lot here. So here's where we can go in and set uh, really all of the, set the character of our graphical user interface. So if I go to Ladder Editor, display, rung wrapping, show rung numbers, show rung comments. Here's a, a very important one. Show tag alias information. You're going to want that checked. Um, I usually turn off comments simply because I don't want to use up the space. You know, I want to see more logic. I don't want to see the comments. Now, if it's a program I didn't write, I turn on the run comments because I want to see what the author says the logic does. The big thing though for you space cadets <laughs> is setting the color. Now typically um, I use very muted colors. So we'll see what these what it looks like when we get started. I think less is more. I don't want a bunch of wild colors that saturate the cones in, on my retina and make it hard. You know, I like to take out as much as possible and only emphasize just what I'm interested in. So for you space cadets, go ahead and make it as gaudy as you can make it. And then later on, you can tone her down a little bit when you start getting serious. Just joking. Okay, so this is where you can set um, basically the character or the parameters of your display. So see, you can set it different for ladder, sequential function charts, function block diagrams, and structured text, and also for trends. Uh, trends will probably do in volume two or volume three. So we'll cancel. That was under tools options. Here's documentation language, so that's it right there. Earlier I wasn't sure it's right there. See that symbol? Like a picture of the world with a check mark, documentation languages. Uh, import, export, there is nothing to import, export because you don't have a program open. EDS hardware installation tool. I've never used that in 5000, but <clears throat> if a new piece of hardware comes out and you don't have an electronic data sheet to support it, here's where you would install it. And basically you'll open this, then you'll browse and point to where you have the EDS file and it will install it into your library. And then of course you got motion and it's all grayed out. Uh, when you do the motion lab, you'll understand what direct commands and tune um, are custom tools. Well, anyway, so if you look down through here, there's the boot PDHCP server. Remember I told you about that back in RS links. This is clear keeper. That's probably for a control net. So I'm not going to go down through all these, but here's a bunch of tools. Window, nothing you can do. There's nothing to cascade, nothing to tile. And of course, the ever uh, growing help file. Now, if you don't load up your software right, uh, you know, I've never checked this. So we'll go to online books and see what happens. Starting, oh, you know what? I don't have an internet connection, but at least I did load the manual. So if we're going to do compact logics, I can click on that. Oh, you know what? I disable the PDF um, 
feature because it was interfering with Camtasia Studio that I'm using to record this with. Now I also own Adobe Captivate. I just haven't taken the time to uh, give it a whirl. But both those add-ins are in PowerPoint and unfortunately I had to turn off the PDF. So we'll cancel that. But if this was your situation, you can go to any one of these categories and there's the manuals like the instruction set and I'm telling you one of these manuals is huge let's see general instructions most instructions I think this puppy right here is three four five six seven hundred pages I don't remember but it's a big one so and then there's also downloads and websites you could go to we're not connected to the web we're not going to do that so I'm going to close that and that is it for uh, cruising the main toolbar so thank you for watching and next we'll do probably create a project thank you for watching this was a lab discussion video navigating RSLogix 5000 in support of an introduction to RS5000 volume 1